Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog video. Today I'm going to talk about how I make a Reaper blog video from the cameras, the software, the lighting, pretty much everything in this video. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online platform for creators with thousands of classes on art, design, photography, productivity, and more. Skillshare has been a sponsor of the Reaper blog for about a year now. They've really helped keep my channel going, and I've also learned a ton. I recently watched a class called Introduction to Lighting and Videography. This is a perfect example of how a Skillshare class directly affects how I make my videos. Even though I've seen hundreds of classes on lighting before in various places online, I actually learned quite a few new things. I really enjoyed the section on layering light as well as using gels. Uh, these are techniques that I haven't really explored before, haven't seen covered very well before, and uh, I learned a lot from them. If you're like me and you love to learn new things, I know that you'll love Skillshare. You can try for 60 days with the link in the description absolutely free. And after that, it's just about $10 a month for a full year. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring the Reaper blog. So what you're seeing right now is basically my Q&A setup. Um, this is my temporary setup for recording. I've got a light here on this side. Um, I've got some background lights. Um, that's just, you know, that's part of my permanent setup. I've got my camera in front of me, and I've got my iPad here for notes and a shotgun microphone. This is a Rode NTG2 running into a Zoom H5. At my desk setup, I've used a few different microphones. For most of my videos, I use this microphone, the Rode NTG2. It has a good reach and it has a pretty good sound. Lately, I've been using the uh, AKG D5. It's a dynamic mic. It sounds pretty good. It's made for vocals and uh, it's one of the mics that I've wanted for quite a long time. Uh, you know, kind of a, as a hi-fi alternative to a, a Shure SM58. And then I've got this mic, which I've owned for several years. I pretty much stopped using it just because it's so damn heavy, and any microphone stand that I put it on just sags over time. Usually I have to adjust it a couple times in a video. And it really doesn't reject sound all that well. I still have to do lots of noise reduction, no matter what mic I use. When it comes to using this mic or this mic or this mic, they all sound pretty good. I always have to do post-production on them, so uh, I just went with the lighter one, which has made my desk setup a lot simpler. Now, when I record these videos over here, I'm not using my main camera. I'm usually using the GX7 from Panasonic. For these videos, I'm usually using a Sigma um, 19 millimeter f2.8. It's the EXDN. Um, all my cameras are Micro Four Thirds, and I currently have three that I use for making videos. So my Q and A's are usually done on this. Um, great little camera, great for street photography. Not so great for video because the screen on the back actually doesn't um, flip forward in any way. I can't see myself unless I use the app and my phone. I've done a couple videos like that, and it worked really well. So I've got this little um, cold shoe adapter thing. It, it sits on top. I put my phone in here facing me. Uh, nope, got this backwards. So I got my phone in here like this, and when it's on the tripod in front of me, I can see what I'm doing. Uh, usually I, I check the focus and everything, make sure that that's good, hit record from the phone, and put the phone onto the camera so that I remember to look towards the lens and not down at my notes or, you know, any, anywhere else. This is pretty much my Q&A setup. I roll sound, I roll camera, I do a clap at the beginning to get it all in sync. I'm checking my notes, uh, reading questions and things like that from there. And um, I've been getting some compliments that, you know, these videos actually look pretty good. They like this setup. My light here is just a cheap softbox light. I've had this for a couple of years now. It's the color is a little bit weird with it. It's sort of more of a green tint. Um, even using custom white balance, it doesn't quite look right. Um, and I do some corrections in Reaper to make it look a little bit nicer, uh, especially if I have to match other cameras. For pretty much all of 2019, my main setup back here at the desk has been using the uh, Olympus EPL5. It's not a great video camera. 
it's a camera that I bought just to get better at stills photography and, um, you know, food photography, street photography, things like that, that I was interested in. And I bought this, I think in 2015. As far as video features, this really doesn't have a lot, but it does have this great flip up screen. So it's really easy to see myself um, at about an arm's distance. It works really well. No microphone input, no app to, you know, to remote control it or anything like that. But the footage comes out looking pretty good. And in a lot of my videos, what you see is actually stretched up um, by 25% to go from 1080p to a 2K um, video, which matches my screen capture. So rather than shrinking the screen capture, losing a lot of the detail, I actually stretch up the video and people still like the quality. So, so yeah, so I've been using this camera for about 100 videos this year and I really challenged myself in 2019 to, you know, nail down a setup and, and do as many videos as possible with just the basics of lighting, one camera, one lens, and then just my own creativity to do more. This was a good camera for that, but I have since upgraded, which you've probably been guessing because if I'm holding these cameras and my phone, how am I filming this right now? Well, I've upgraded to the Panasonic. Uh, G7, which is another micro four thirds camera. My main lens is on that right now. This one doesn't have a flip up screen, it has a flip out screen, which um, you might see me looking off to the side a little bit. This camera does have a built in microphone port, uh, doesn't have headphones out. Having a microphone jack built in and meters on the screen is, is really cool, even though I don't actually use it because I'm still using the H5 or going into the computer most of the time but I'm sure that I will use that function in the future. Uh, this camera has a lot more video focused features. It has things like focus peaking for uh, showing you an outline of what areas are in focus. Uh, that's only active in manual focus mode, but often I'm using that. Um, autofocus works fairly well. Continuous autofocus is a, probably a little bit better than it was on this one, but I've kind of given up on that functionality in most cameras anyways. In the new year, I'll be using this camera for streaming as well uh, through the Elgato cam link. It's just this little USB stick with a HDMI on one side, USB on the other, uh, USB three, it gets the signal from the camera uh, on the HDMI port, goes into the computer, and then I can use that for video recording direct to the hard drive, and that has worked really well. And along with this, I have a like a dedicated power supply for the camera. It's got the HDMI cable and it's more of a permanent setup at my desk. It's been amazing to not have to worry about batteries dying um, as I constantly do when I'm whenever I'm recording in like a situation like this. This camera with third party batteries was terrible. Uh, it would just shut off mid recording and lose all that footage. So I've got a huge memory card in there and a uh, dedicated power supply so I can record pretty much all day now. One of the things that makes my videos look much better than they did a few years ago is lighting. I've got a light over here, which is uh, made by Newer. It takes two batteries, which were included, it has a charger for those batteries included, AC power, um, which is how I have it set up right now. Uh, it's really improves the quality of my videos a lot, just to have a nice, like, bright and adjustable light at my desk has been really great. Um, I would definitely buy another one because uh, they're very affordable and, and good quality. Besides that, I have four of these lights. You can kind of barely see it, but these colored lights, um, they work on a remote control. I got these through Amazon. They're just the 10 watt model. Um, if I was to buy them again, I would probably get the 15 watt just for a little bit more power, maybe even the 20 watt. Um, I think it would be worth a little paying a little bit more for that because they're not very bright. I wish my background in my main shot at the desk was much more of an intense color. So I have two facing the background and two facing this um, diffuser on my right side. So I think that's all I can talk about from this angle. Let's move over to the desk to finish this off. So when it comes to screen capture, I use ScreenFlow. I've been using ScreenFlow for years. It works great on the Mac. Um, for a while, I was using it for editing my videos, um, but ran into various issues with that as the videos got more and more complex. Right now, I'm using it to capture through the cam link this G7. Um, 
and I'm capturing my screen. My audio input I have set to audio fuse, um, but I could also easily set that up through Loopback, uh, which is a software I've featured probably about a year ago that gets my microphone input into channel one. If I have a, someone talking on Skype, I can get that output into channel two. My Reaper outputs go to three and four, and inside of uh, the ScreenFlow recording, I actually have all of those different layers that I can split out, mix down, or anything like that. So let me show you what a typical project looks like from uh, ScreenFlow after I get the recording done. I've got my screen capture video here, and usually the audio is in a separate file, and then I have to right-click, extract audio, and then get my channels three and four. On this one, I go to the audio settings, and uh, I usually solo this one. And on this one, I make sure that the audio outputs are even on the left and right with the, the different channels. ScreenFlow doesn't have a mono export, so after I export, I have to use a tool called Audio Move, and it just splits out the two different channels. And so my voice is on channel one, just the left side. After I split it, I delete channel two. So here's a project folder for a recent project. I've got um, my capture video file. I've got my voice recording. I have the ScreenFlow project. I have a another screen capture. I've got uh, my main camera angle for the talking to the camera section. Then I've got some B-roll parts. You know, things like this to add in as another layer in the video. I've got some audio from the screen capture session. I've got some guitar playing B-roll, another project for that, and then I've got some image files. So these are all in a folder. Uh, they get imported into a Reaper project. So the Reaper project looks like this. I like to use Reaper for all my video editing, um, primarily because it's so good with audio, um, but also because I can treat video files pretty much exactly like audio files. You know, I don't need to learn another piece of software to do my video edits. Just things like grouping works so much better in Reaper than it does in other programs. Like if I group these items together and I split them, you know, it makes a new group here instead of attaching these uh, six items together like it would in Premiere and a lot of other programs. So grouping actually works. That's one big reason I use Reaper. Uh, the other reason is that it seems to handle any video files that I throw at it. So I could have 4K footage along with 720p footage, and it will play them back fine. I can mix and match different color spaces. I can generate text and things like that. But when I drop in my footage, I usually drop them in at around like 40 minutes in the timeline. And I go through and mark the parts that I like. I want to keep. I usually play back at double speed. And then I use a script to bring all my selected regions into the start of the project. I move my intro um, part over a little bit. And you can see my title screen. This is just generated text in Reaper. This stuff is kind of annoying to do, but um, it works pretty well once you're used to that workflow. I've got uh, a lower third here with my name and website. Um, I've got color correction on this, this footage here. Another lower third. I've got another bunch of screen capture B-roll. I do all my edits in Reaper. I do color correction in Reaper. I do titles and animations and things like that in Reaper, mostly because when you edit to the dialogue, it's incredibly easy. You know, I, I've edited podcasts and videos in Reaper for so long now that it's don't need to think about the technical aspects of it. And I was never able to get fast with Premiere, with Resolve or anything like that. You can't really customize those systems. You can't write scripts for those to make your editing workflow faster like you can with Reaper. So when the video is all done, I make sure that I have the start and end markers here. So that's just a marker called equals END for the end point. I render it using a 16,000 kilobits per second H.264 with the audio as 320 kilobit AAC. 
that goes up on YouTube and then you get to watch it. Going into 2020, I am going to be streaming more often. And this is my setup using OBS for purpose of streaming. Um, so I've got various different scenes in OBS here. My starting soon, main camera, big camera, main with no camera, uh, technical difficulties, and a thanks for watching. OBS is a pretty complicated piece of software. On a good day, it works fantastically. On a bad day, it just doesn't work for no reason at all, apparently. One of the things that's gonna help a lot with streaming is the Elgato Stream Deck. Press the right button, big camera. The Elgato Stream Deck, which integrates really well with OBS. I can press different buttons and go to different scenes. I can mute my microphone, I can mute my background audio or anything else I want. Start and stop the stream, start and stop recording. It's fantastic. Usually I have my main window for OBS up on another monitor. So it's always visible, it's out of the way, and I still have my full uh, screen for doing stuff in Reaper. The setup is pretty much the same as with the other one. It's the Panasonic G7 with the HDMI out into the cam link that gets picked up easily by OBS. And then I mix that with a built-in screen capture that it has. I haven't yet done a stream with this setup, but uh, who knows, maybe I'll have already done a stream with this setup um, by the time you're watching this. But definitely planning on doing a lot more streams, uh, maybe even weekly in the next year. So, um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, be subscribed and have the notification bell thing for that uh, so you know that when I'm going live. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you've enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments. Give it a like and uh, stay tuned for a lot more tutorials. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.